Let's help welcome to the stage, Black Diamond, Denise Walsh! Hello. <laughs> hey guys, how are you? Are you so excited to be here? You should be, you earned it. I'm so excited for you. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Denise Walsh and I have been uh, an It Works distributor for almost 12 years. Isn't that crazy? Where do you think you're gonna be in 12 years? Somewhere, somewhere. Okay, but I have a question for you. How many of you, when you started your business, you set a business goal? Maybe it was a rank or an income that you wanted to hit and you did it. Raise your hand. Sweet, that's why you're in this room. Okay, so what about personal? How many of you set a personal goal? Maybe paying off debt or going on vacation and you did it, raise your hand. Awesome, awesome. Like I remember every single, like where exactly I was when I hit every promotion. I remember exactly where I was when I hit the commissions tab and saw crazy cab checks like woo! Anybody know that feeling? Yeah, for me, my highest check, I was driving um, one of my sons around for nap because he wouldn't sleep. So we were like in a little old Podunk, Caledonia. Whoop, whoop, Caledonia, yeah. <laughs> I'm in Grand Rapids, you guys know that. Uh, and I was driving around at a stop sign and I pressed commissions and started going, ah! Have you ever experienced that? If not, you will soon. That's why you need to get to Diamond. Um, so what I want you to do is picture yourself in that space where you hit a promotion or you hit a huge crazy goal. Put yourself there, picture it. And then I want you to give yourself a little pat on the back. High five your neighbor and say, I did it! Awesome, we, we did it! I mean, we really need to give ourselves space to just enjoy the journey, right? And really think about how far we've come. So like, soak it in, enjoy it for just a minute. Because today we're actually gonna talk about what to do after you hit your goal. When you start asking yourself the question, what's next? I like to call this redreaming or maybe cultivating your own personal vision. Now, why don't we naturally redream? I mean, I know a lot of people, including myself, who hit the goal, say, I did it, and then we stay there. <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah. So what I've learned over the course of this decade is that there's probably a lot of reasons why we stay stuck once we hit a goal, but one of them has to do with guilt. Guilt, guilt of leaving people behind, or the guilt of feeling like we shouldn't want more keeps us stuck where we are instead of focused on where we're going. And one of the things that I continue to work on and continue to develop is this harmony between gratitude and vision. You see, I love where I am, but I know where I'm going. Personal vision is when we have a picture of our future that produces passion. It's when you see yourself three steps ahead of where you are today and you can't wait to get up in the morning to go pursue it. It's like lighting your own fire. It's that inspiration each and every day to take steps in that direction because you have a clear picture of where you're going. And so today, right now, I'm gonna give you some space to create your own personal vision and to start asking yourself, what's next? So, here's what I want you to do. We've got some space here, so please feel free to spread out. I want you to find one partner. Cammie teed it up by having you sit by someone you don't know, so if you're sitting by someone you don't know, you can choose them. If you're sitting by someone you do know, choose someone else, so find someone you don't know. One person spread out, and I want you to be sitting face to face, knee to knee, eye to eye, and then we'll go through the exercise. Does anybody need a partner? If you need your partner, raise your hand and find someone else who has their hand raised.
so good. Does anybody need a partner? Raise your hand if you need a partner. There's some, oh, two over there. Find someone that has your hand, keep your hand up. So, yeah, okay, you guys are good. Anyone else need a partner? If you're going to the bathroom, do this in the bathroom. You can find a partner there. All right, is everybody good? Okay, so introduce yourself to your partner. Let them know where you live and how long you've been in the business. All right, so the person who's been in the business the longest is partner A. And if they're, you've both been in like the same exact day time, then the person who drove the furthest to get here. Does everybody know who partner A is? Partner A, raise your hand. All right, all right. Okay, so this is what I want you to do first. We're gonna, I'm gonna ask you to just say one thing, partner A. Your job is just to simply ask one question. You're not to respond, you're not to give feedback, you're not to go be like, oh, me too, like you're nothing. Your job, partner A, is just to ask the question, what do you want? What do you want? And if you have done this exercise or you've seen me on Transformation Tuesday, just know that the more you do it, the deeper it gets. It's all, it always works, always. So, partner A, your job is just to simply say, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? What do you want? Until I tell you to stop. Now, partner B, this is the one I want you to think about. I want you to think about all seven areas of life. I want you to think about your business, your family, your finances, your health, your hobbies, giving back. What's the other one? Friendship, family, did I say friends? Yeah, you wanna think about all areas of life because what I found is when people do this exercise, a lot of times they're like, I want world peace. <laughs> Which I totally understand. But you can't put that in your calendar. I mean, it's just a little bit tricky. So think about all seven areas of life. Think about things that you can do on a daily basis. Like give a sandwich to a homeless person. You could do that. And that is like part of world peace, it all lines up. So what I want you to do is like take it down a few notches to like something you can put in your calendar because that is what we are going to do next. Does anybody have any questions? All right, knee to knee, eye to eye, so that way you can hear each other. Partner A, I'm gonna start the timer and go. Finish up your last sentence. Give your partner a hug and say thank you for sharing with me.
All right. Partner B, raise your hand. You know what time it is for you. Partner B is now asking the question. What do you want? What do you want? What do you want? Go. All right, thank your partner. Finish up what you're saying, give them a hug and say thank you for sharing with me. You can head back to your seat and go to page nine. All right, open up your workbooks to page nine. And I'm gonna give you just a minute to brain dump everything you just said. Yeah, on there you'll see 30 things I want to be, do, and have. Just kind of brain dump everything that you just mentioned with your partner. Next time I'll have you videotape each other so you can't forget, but I wanna give you some space to just write it all down and then we'll move on from there. Page nine, yeah, you'll see 30 things I wanna be, do, and have. You can brain dump everything you just mentioned into that section. I feel like I need a dance, like a choreographed dance during this time. All right, well, right above that, you're gonna see ideal day. I'm gonna call it your dream day. One thing I want um, to think about is, you know, we talked about all of these things you want, right? Uh, when you do this exercise, you're saying, I want. The next step is to say, I am. And the third step is to take those action items, those things you want to be, do, and have, and put them on your calendar. So for just a minute, I want you guys to close your eyes. And we're gonna really think about some of these things that you mentioned, what would that look like in your every day? So picture yourself waking up in your dream room. Do you see mountains, snow, woods, a beautiful pool? Are you with anyone? Spouse, children, or it, this is your dream, you could totally be alone. What do you do next? 
you get up. And your ideal, like, don't think about what's reasonable or realistic. I'm so not interested in that. I want to know what is it that you want and what would your dream day be? So you wake up, where your dream location, do you see sand, like, get super clear. You get up, what do you do? Do you do your devotionals? Do you go work out? Do you have coffee? Do you have your keto coffee and greens? What do you do? What is the first thing that you do? And how do you feel? Peaceful, joyful, content. And then what? For me, I t- my children easily and effortlessly get, on, get in my car with no complaining to go to school. Because this is my dream. It can be whatever I want. So what does your dream day look like for you? Take it through every single section of your day. Lunch, after school activities, evening time, bedtime. What does it look like? How do you feel? Who are you with? <sighs> you guys look so good. All right. You can open up your eyes. And I know you're going to want to continue to write this down. And all the things that are bubbling up right now, take them very seriously. Get them onto the paper. And we'll talk later about implementing them into, this, into your every day. But I want to first hear from you. How does it feel talking about some of this stuff? How does it feel to dream? Beautiful. That is my life mission. She said she cried. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> but it feels good, doesn't it? We don't give ourselves space for this, do we? Not, a, not as much as we need to. How does it feel? Yeah? Uh huh. That happens. Bringing things up. What else? Yeah. Yeah. So, what's that? Foreign. Foreign. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's new for a lot of us. I did this with my dad, and he was like, no one has ever asked me these questions ever. And I was like, hi, dad. <laughs> but it's true, we don't give ourselves the space, and this is so necessary for our growth. And to be honest, I could talk about this all day. <laughs> and if you listen to the podcast, you're like, she does actually talk about this all day. I really feel like this is one of the things that separated me. Keeping my own personal vision alive kept me focused on my goal and excited to work for it. And you'll find the same thing. Your personal vision is what's going to separate you from the pack because people follow people who know where they're going. And when there is no vision, the people perish. So think about your own story, the fire brewing within your belly. Your personal vision, your what's next, when it's strong in your mind, strong in your heart, is going to create momentum in your business because it catapults you to your next level. I've got one other exercise for you to do. Everybody stand on up. You can put your stuff down and space out a little bit. You don't like, want to bonk each other. I won't make you talk to anyone this time, don't worry. All right, so in this next exercise, I'm going to share with you what to do first, and then I'm going to ask you to do it. So first you're going to listen, and then you're going to follow. Got it? So don't do it yet until I tell you to. Okay? Okay, so this is what I'm going to ask you to do in just a minute. I'm going to ask you to raise your right arm. Not now. That always happens. Just in a minute, raise your right arm, and then twist as far as possible, and then like, like, Figure out exactly how far you could go and memorize that location, okay? All right, so everybody raise your right arm and twist to the left as far as you can. Memorize that location and then bring it forward and down. All right, now I want you to close your eyes. Now we are going to imagine, you're not actually going to do it, but you're going to imagine raising your right arm twisting to the left, easily and effortlessly going past that first spot even further. In your imagination, bring your arm to the front and down. We're going to imagine it one more time. Imagine bringing your right arm up, twist to the left, easily and effortlessly past the first spot, past the second spot, and to the third spot. Even further than you thought originally went. 
Now imagine bringing your arm back to the front and down. All right, now you may open your eyes. And we're going to actually do it. So what I want you to do is raise your right arm and twist as far as you can, easily and effortlessly past the first spot to the second spot and even a third spot. Bring it back to the front and down. Did anybody go further? Like a lot further? All right, let's try it again, just to see if this is like pretend. OK, raise your right arm. You can bring it back to the front. Anybody go even further that time? Why is that? We didn't do yoga. No. No. We become what we think about. We, th we become what we think about. So there's three things. I want to leave you with. Number one, clarity is king. When you know what you want and you see it in your mind's eye, the rest will fall into place. Number two, you can always go further than you think you can, every time. Number three, once you break through your own glass ceiling, you can never go back. And so my friends, I want to ask you today and throughout your It Works journey to love where you are, but know where you're going. Thank you.